Hello, good afternoon. Um, this is a quick video because um, there's a young lady who I actually follow on Instagram. She's lovely. Um, obviously, I don't know her and she doesn't know me. And that is the one thing she did point out today to everybody is as much as I appreciate the fact that people like following me on social media, I don't know you, you don't know me. And one of the things that she talked openly about is the fact that the reason why she tries as much as possible in order to keep her, like, anonymity secret, or, you know, at least as much of her life as private as possible, is because of stalking in the past. Now, People might not know a lot about stalking or how it works or what may be classed as stalking or what isn't classed as stalking. And the reason for that is because the laws around something like stalking are not set in stone. They are very fluid, as I would call it. They're one of those laws that can be very fluid in its outlook. And people can sail what I would call very close to the wind. But then because they've not done something in particular, they will not necessarily be classed as being stalked by somebody or someone might not be classed as being a stalker. Now, I know in America, <coughs> <coughs> like every state kind of has its own laws and reg regulations. And one of the things they do have, not in every single state in America, as far as I know, is what they call Amber Alerts. So if a child goes missing, they have now what is called the Amber Alert system. But I do believe that it's still not enforced in every single state in America. If it, if it has been, fantastic. But <clears throat> I don't think it has. So basically, if a child goes missing... Within a certain time period, they're supposed to issue what is called an Amber Alert to inform the authorities and anyone else in the country or in that state specifically as to this missing child, when they were last seen, and potentially they will find them alive. Now, with stalking, again, in America, I watched a film when I was younger and it was about this young woman who was bullied at school and eventually what ended up happening is the person that was bullying her killed her. But prior to killing her, she was harassing this young woman. Um, she was stalking her. But it wasn't classed as stalking because stalking back then didn't exist in the eyes of the law. So it wasn't until tragically after the death of this young girl in America, I don't know which state it was in, I can't remember, did the, the mother of this child, she um, fought to change the law in that state so that being harassed and stalking became a felony. And <clears throat> the other problem we have now is there are so many ways that people can access our lives. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, that they're going to follow us in the street or stand outside our house or um, follow us to places. People can actually stalk you via the internet, via social media, which is where other laws are broken and other laws come into play, such as um, people stealing your identity. So like d identity theft and cloning, etc., is very common. And there are a lot, there's a lot of that going on out there now. But unfortunately, the laws that are supposed to protect people haven't actually caught up to speed with the way that society has grown to have this kind of like electronic um, fingerprints, electronic um, profile, so to speak. So when this uh, young woman was saying that she'd been stalked, I felt quite sad for her. Because from what I've gleaned from what she does for a living, she's a very kind of like successful person. But she's quite young still. She's only in her 20s. And it just shocks me how like at times, even though she hasn't wanted to, she's had to kind of like defend herself. And I keep thinking to myself, don't do it. You know, don't lower yourself to have to do that. 
you know, like people were slagging her off and saying stuff like, oh, stop uh, wasting people's time on social media and blogging from your bedroom, go and, get, go and get a proper job. And she said, well, I don't need to get a job, thank you. I've got three. And what's wrong with people, you know, talking on social media? What's wrong with people living in what looks like bed sits or homeless shelters or you know, caravans or because people were, were speculating basically as to what she did and where she lived and one thing and another. And so I thought it was very brave of her, to be honest, to start opening up a little bit and saying, look, you know, the reason why I blog from home is be- to avoid people knowing where I live or like if I was to be on a bridge or something in Scotland, so I know she lives in Scotland, it wouldn't take a genius to kind of figure out which bridge she was on and, you know, guess whereabouts she lived so you know good on her and recently with anyone who stands for local elections you now do not have to put your address now because I've already stood for local elections in the past my address would light up like a Christmas tree but now you can just say oh I live in Nuneaton or I live in Bedworth I live in Rugby I live in Leeds you don't actually have to say the postcode or the the number of your house or anything and I find it really shocking that it's taken that long for that to change and I'm hoping that in the future more people will have the confidence to stand for local elections if they're not with a party but choose to be independent because after the death of people like Joe Cox for example um, I would have thought that people even if they had a political stance or whatever stance they have in the community that unless you chose to disclose where you lived, then that should obviously be confidential. But at the same time, when I have voted for people in the past to you know, represent me in my hometown, I want to be assured that the person that's going to represent me is local. So if it did just say, oh, lives in Nuneaton, I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's fine. But if it was to say, oh, they live in Leeds, I'd be thinking, well, why are you wanting to stand at a local election for Nuneaton? okay, you've probably worked here for six months, which is how you've got in, because there's ways around the system. You don't necessarily have to live in the town or the village or or the county that you want to be a county councillor for or a local councillor or even an MP. But, again, the anonymity side of that has only kind of come into force this year. And, again, I tried really hard to, for my own personal beliefs, to pick someone local. Now, I didn't actually stand this year, and the reason for that was because of my health. Um, it wasn't that I didn't want to, it was just with everything that was going on in Nuneaton, there was this huge shitstorm about people having children who were disabled and how people aren't really disabled. It's just the fact that all the parents who are claiming they have disabled children are just shit at being parents. So if you want to know more about that, just Google Nuneaton Borough Council and County and Warwickshire County Council views on um, SEN support and the information will be readily available on social media. And, you know, so for this reason, I thought to myself, I'm not going to stand for local council this year because all it's going to do is divide the vote. It would just be a lot easier if people just, you know, had Green, Conservative, Labour. And I think they were the and then there was like Lib Dem and I think there was the Reformed Party. I, I can't remember which because we've actually had like two elections this year. We had a local election and then obviously we had the um, election for MP as well. So I just want to say, um, I think once again, the reason for this was to obviously highlight the fact of stalking and how proud I am of this young lady for opening up and talking about this on social media and I think the other reason is it's just to make people aware that you know to a degree we have what's called freedom of speech in the UK which is absolutely brilliant but that doesn't mean that people should be cruel or vindictive or abusive in order to get their point across so like I've said before everybody who's been watching my videos it's amazing to think that they've only sort of picked up some traction this year I mean I've been blogging and vlogging for years and no things really picked up any traction other than when I start talking more about the government and <laughs> bioassin malabsorption 
and the NHS, which were things that I didn't really want to talk about, but have ended up talking about because they've been very, like, the main part of my life recently, especially with having my son as well with SEN needs. So, you know, I've kind of discussed those things. But again, you know, there's no need to be rude or vindictive to people. Everyone is going to have their own opinions, and that's great. But at the same time, it's about being courteous. So, you know, with stalking, I mean, if I can find more information about it, I'll try and put a link on or, like, advise people information about it. And it is trying to stay safe, not just when you go out and about, but obviously on social media as well. But again, without the laws changing to protect people, I mean, this could happen at any time. Cyberbullying, again, is very popular in schools, in work, you know. And again, because the law hasn't caught up with social media and how these things can affect people, can be borderline like harassment or stalking or you know in these even in decent exposure people sending you um pictures of parts of their body without your consent um there's really nothing in you know unless you've got a really good lawyer that the government or even the police can do about it so as i tell my children be kind be nice to people do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. You know, <clears throat> him without sin may cast the first stone. These are all things that we are taught as a child. But I think as we get older, we they kind of get lost in translation. So please stay safe. Please stay happy. Please stay well. And do unto others as you would like them to do unto you is all I can say. You know, um, so take care and... If, like I said, if you don't know a lot about stalking, by all means, Google it, find out more information about it, because staying safe is the most important thing in the world. Thank you.